Hey everyone, welcome to Weekend Project. This is Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. We are working on block three of our Christmas quilt, which is called Smitten Mittens. Also from McCallsQuilting.com, free pattern. So have at her. There's uh, lots to choose from. I even found our fourth block because I was a little stumped. I was still trying to wait to hear back from the um, the um, uh, people who, the publisher for the quilt Ca um, calendar that I got as a gift and they still haven't responded so I guess we're just gonna have to find our own free stuff so there's this mitten mittens for this week and uh, because I wanted our blocks to be bigger than the 10 by 10 there I blew it up 125 percent and just traced it from there so you can tell this is size difference right there there and I just traced it out everything out like it's supposed to but I realized <laughs> because, you know, I'm smart that way, is all the little middies that are going to be having the thumbs this way are actually mine are going to be pointing the other way because when I traced it out, I put it so the sticky side was going to be going this way. So, you know, Lorlin does it Lorlin's way. Because <laughs> that's Lorlin. And that's okay, because you can adapt. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether the thumbs are going this way, the thumbs are going that way. It doesn't matter. So I chose my mitten color and my little band just to try and accent, you know, pop a color. You know, it's just because it's winter. And then I have, I chose this one checkered pattern, but I did it on the angle. And that's why I wanted to save this for you. So you could see that I didn't just lay it square wise. So it had some interesting looking mittens. You know what I mean? It wasn't just on the angle. Okay, so anyways, we don't need that. And we don't need that. And we have this and this. And then there was one more to trace out. And this is the band for that mitten. Okay, pretty cool. Happy with that. And then there's this one here that we just need to cut out. So I just want to show you really how easy it is. And make sure you're using your, you know, your scissors you use for the tougher stuff and paper and so on and so forth. Don't be using your fabric scissors with any of this iron on stuff. It'll just dull your good fabric scissors fast. All right. Okay. So there's the last one. <clears throat> that can go in the scrap pile. Put those there, or if you want to mix it up, put the, you know, green band on the bottom there and the blue band over here. I mean, it's totally up to you. I mean, your color choice is your choice. So I have just a plain white, because, I mean, my squares are going to be many different colors. This is block one for week one. This is the tree. Block two was two tall houses, but we did the block twice, because the one block was just the one house. Uh, and we added just a little tiny divider in between the houses because I don't like them so close. So this is the one we're going to use as the background for this week. And I've marked the points of where I pretty much want my mittens to lay in the center of and then we'll work our way around. So the rest is just applique, pinning and applique. So, and, um, but you need something to help make sure that this is stiff. So when you're stitching through, you're not going to get frayed edges a lot. It's, there's, um, uh, called many things like Wonder Under, I think, or some pillion, you know, iron-on stuff, okay? Choice is yours. <clears throat> so now it's just trying to matter of getting the placement right. So I'll just try and get the blues to go across from each other. You could have done four different color mittens. I mean, it's totally up to you. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be bang on. I thought of making them so they look like they were holding like snowballs or something or ready to clap in the snow or something. But I figured, you know, stick to the pattern, Laura Lynn. Don't be too wild. <laughs> don't be too crazy. And then we'll sew those on after we get the, the mitten on first. But I just wanted to, to see what it was going to look like. I think it's going to be cool. So obviously my, my pattern is not going the way that they, there is their thumbs. But I'm okay with that. And if you wanted to see a certain block made up, by all means, we have like eight more to do. So give a suggestion. Be happy if you flip through the little McCall's or, or any free law, free online pattern. I, you know, give me a heads up. I, I, we, we can do it. Um, I like the bow tie wreath. That, um, that's this one. That's going to be block four. I really like that one because it has, has lots of little different things that we're going to, we can use up some scrappy bit fabrics and a couple of different colored reds, a couple of different colored greens. You know, it says for the dark green part, it says black on here, but I think we'll use dark green. I don't want black. 
Okay, I think I'm going to move my midi down a bit. I kind of want to make just like a little square in the center, but I don't want the cuffs to overlap. Oops, there we go. So I want to make sure that they're not going to overlap at all. Looks good to me. Okay, so we'll do the big midis first and then the little cuffs. And this is a chance you could use uh, fake fur, uh, but the best thing to do with fake fur is to cut it upside down. So you have not you're not cutting with the free, you're cutting just the fabric it's really attached to. That's really what you want to cut. Just slip your scissors right in there. And that would be an awesome funky dimensional quilt too. That would be super cool. All right. Does cameraman think those are okay? Yep. Awesome cameraman. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm gonna move this blue one just down just a smidgy. Just looking to see how much white this one had around it. Like I said, they don't have to be bang on. Do what you want. Alrighty. I set my machine up for zigzag. I have that uh, 4.0 for this way and um, 6, uh, 0.65 for um, the closeness of the stitch and the zigzag. So, And I just have a nice cool gray thread in the top and the bottom. And uh, you can start on one side and end on the other. You don't have to go across here because your other cuffy mitten part is going to cover that. So don't be too worried about that. All right. And then just zigzag it along. This is a, another chance to use fancy stitches on your machine. You may have a blanket stitch or, um, you know, just do another, you know, stitches. Maybe one that stitches out a little holly leaf or something like that, you know. Get creative if you want. Up to you, especially if you're using plain fabrics like in the center. I chose patterns just because I want it to be very, you know, catchy to the eye. And when you're turning on curves, make sure you stop with your needle on the outside so when you can lift your foot a little bit and then it's still it's going to stitch evenly. You don't want any gaps, right? Sometimes you can just help turn it around, but other times you really are going to have to stop and pivot. And when it comes right close to the corner of the thumb there, make sure you're stopping on the inside, touching the fabric, and then repositioning. You can always lift your needle up, shift it just a little bit, and then back stitch. stitch. And of course, you're trying to do the thumb here. So stop on the outside, switch, a little bit more, stop on the outside. Just like nice smooth transitions. You don't want any jerky movements going around because uh, you know you want this to look pretty and last. Okay, so back stitch at the end. Alright. See? Perfect. Take a little pin out. <clears throat> and you can uh I I thought about changing thread to do the pink one here, but I think I'm just gonna keep it all the same. I like that little the shine on that uh, that um, cool gray. I think it's very pretty. Because, you know, it's going to be that way soon. Cold and snowy. Apparently, the almanac has predicted a very cold one this year. So. That's okay. I got electric socks. I'm cool. I got this. <laughs> oh man, winter won't get me. Like I said, just do that whenever you need to, to come around. Make sure you're trying to stop on the outside. I mean, you can stop on the inside, but you'll see, you'll see why you should stop on the outside. <laughs> it's just more pleasant to the eye. It doesn't, your eye doesn't catch it. Just come right down into the corner right of that mitten. Stop it on the inside. Shift the needle up, move it just a little bit more. Don't want to overlap too much in that corner. You can always shift a little bit and backtrack. So like I said, if you have any block ideas or want to see a block done or, or design a block, hey, I'm all for that. This is going to be one that hangs in the quilt shop. So. That's 
I'm trying to get a little, you know, I get some wild colors going on in there. All right, there's two. Two of the blue middies all done. All right, I'm just getting a couple of the other ones there. So try to make a square kind of in the center there to so not be too, too off. Let's do your back stitch because you, you want those stitches locked into place. You don't want all your, like I say, all your hard work to get unraveled or, you know, so it goes, oh, look, a loose thread, and then yanks on. And you just want to pop me in <laughs> Or is that just me? <laughs> awesome. okay, there we go. Into the center. that publishing company when contact us and that calendar had some awesome 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 blocks so, and I've tried to find like similar blocks for free and I can't so. but oh well we'll make do I mean, if you get, want to get really tactile, you could uh, crochet your little cuffs, you know? You could uh, use some yarn to enhance your quilt. Especially if you know you're going to be hand stitching it together or, you know, um, machine based sort of thing or tie. corners you should sit down for. <laughs> Alright, we are almost there on the last little mitten here. Hope you're enjoying these weekend uh, block projects. I know I certainly am. At least I'm not getting stuff built. <laughs> not getting distracted with other stuff. Right? I got things to do. And it's fun to go through the, your stash and, you know, Use up little bits here, little bits there, because nothing's, it's only a little bit for each block, right? You know, you don't need this big, huge chunk of fabric, like four yards of this and five yards of that, just to get something going on. There we go. Awesome. Okay, now we're going to pin our little cuffs on. We'll clip that thread from there to there. Okay. Well, like I say, this is if you, if you want to mix it up, it's totally up to you. But I will stick with my original idea of the blue on blue and the pink and brown with the green. Just because I think that just, it pops to me. Okay. And you just got to place it over so that the, the bottom of that cuff or bottom of that mitten is hidden under the cuff. Sorry. Okay. So make sure that you have kind of room on both sides that it's going to stay tucked in there and not come undone. Just pop a few pins in. Okay. That gives you a chance if you want. You can do uh, something right in the center, like a little, you know, maybe a little snowman or something, or just make like uh, get some white fabric and make a little snowball. Why not? Be creative or just leave it the way it is. I probably, when quilting it up, will probably draw like snowballs, you know, like a three pack and then do swirls and stuff. And uh, we'll figure it out when I get there. Be excited for, for that long arm Wednesday, that's for sure. And if you don't know about long arm Wednesday, that's another video that we do every week. 
on Walt, my big Gamble Statler Stitcher long arm, and I love him. I had to give him a name. You know, everything's cost you a lot. I <laughs> can't give him a name. Like children. <laughs> Joke. Alright, so we're going to stitch this blue one down first. Alright, and uh, actually, you know, I started at the wrong spot. Try and pick where you're already connected to uh, the mitten itself, okay? And, uh, Okay, try and hide those little back stitches as much as you can. Now, since this is tiny and curved, you really just gotta take your time, mosey posey around. Make sure you're trying to stop on the outside. Be careful of your other needles or your other pins. And of course, remove yours as you're getting close to them. They're not so over. And you'll notice that it gets a little thick because you got a layer of fabric, a layer of your backing, fabric, backing, and fabric here in this, like this one little section, right? You know it's going to get a little thick, so be careful when you're going over. Don't go Speedy Gonzalez or Pedal to the Metal or Leadfoot Larry is what I get called sometimes. Side of that curve. I mean, you have all the work and you know, doing this, try and do it the best you can, right? And nothing is ever perfect, so don't ever expect it to be. All right, do the back stitch and cut. I think actually, I actually was having a discussion with my husband the other day. We were talking about sewing machines and how we think auto cut like a little blade for it to cut, it should be a standard feature in sewing machines. I'm not sure it's because it's been spoiled rotten <laughs> since I've had. Just didn't know me. <laughs> and I don't really want to part with the cut. <laughs> but I've been um, teaching some sewing lessons and <laughs> spoiling these girls rotten by using this big machine, so i got to get the old one out. But I'm like, I don't want to! <laughs> oh well oh. And it's like, well, should be just a standard feature. Why don't they do that? And just mosey around the cup. Then, you know, my finger is my, of my own uh, doing, thanks to the cat and playing the thread with him. <laughs> Apparently he didn't want to play with the thread and uh, decided to take out the hand that was playing with the thread, annoying him. So, I was not as quick as I thought I was. <laughs> right. I don't think it was like, you know, a rotary cutter or anything. Nope. They won't get to gut me. Glass of doom, as we call them. All right. Now, just two little green ones to go. And I've already picked the backing for this quilt. I have to thank my friend Sandra for donating it. She doesn't realize she's donated it, but she has. <laughs> uh, it was a duvet cover that her um, son... It kept slipping the slide all over the place, and it was just pretty much annoying for them. So, you know, they donated it to the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. So, and I really like the fabrics. It's just brown and tans and a bit of blue and cream, but it'll it'll make a nice backing to this Christmas quilt. It'll have a lot of color or, you know, texture and style on the back, but not have to do with Christmas, right? So I can be creative with my stitches and not always have to be like all about snowballs or, you know. It'll still make it an interesting pattern. Thank you, my friend Sandra. And her cute little munchkins, Matthias and Nathaniel. <laughs> and Daryl. We can't leave Daryl out. <laughs> All right. We got one more to go, and we are done. I really hope you are partaking, or at least enjoying. I mean, enjoying the, you know, the process of this coming together. Just line it up. 
Um, been working like crazy on my fall fair entry for the year in fall fair here, Thanksgiving weekend. Very excited about that. I've never entered anything before and it's, it's made me nervous thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, the prizes aren't huge, but I, you know, it helps me get out there, right? And, and um, you know, I like to be creative. It gives me a chance, right? I can't show you until after. It was hanging up earlier. <laughs> and this one behind me right here was actually Long Arm Wednesday that just passed. It was recycled um, tablecloth, a hand cross stitch tablecloth, recycled, and I put it into a wall hanging. And I stitched it all up. So. But I thought I'd show the blue side just so I could pin my blocks to it. Just, just, you can see it's like a, you know, different art piece from both sides, right? And that, my dear buddies, is done. All right, clip off your little thread threads. And that is smitten mittens with the thumbs going the other way. <laughs> Lower Lynn style. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, I hope to see you next week for bow tie wreath. Pick your colors. Check it out if you want. Get your stuff cut. I'll probably, uh, because these seems kind of complicated, I may pre-do these guys down here. Or maybe do two of them and show two or have half and half done or something like that. Because it seems a little bit long. So, so we'll see. Because I don't know how long you want to be entertained for. Could be five minutes. Could be ten minutes. Could be like the whole time. Vince Ross with what's Lord I'm doing in the quilt shop today. Thank you for watching. <laughs> We have fun here. At least we have fun. All right. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell all your friends. And if you want somebody to have a shout out, leave it in the comments. Thank you very much and take care, everybody. See ya.